we have. So I want to talk with you guys today about something really important, really, really important. Probably the most important thing that we could talk about until next week, and then that'll be the most important thing. Uh, but for right now, the concept is reframing resistance. Reframing resistance. So the backstory to this is, I don't know if you guys can tell right now, but I kind of get congested. Head feels uh, like it's not all the way there. My body, man, it's so oh, sore. I just have this like flu soreness, lethargy. I just don't, I just feel like I hit by a bus and have since Saturday. Despite all the plans that I had in place to get done, things to do Saturday, Sunday, today, this week. And rewinding back to last week when my wife was dealing with whatever I'm dealing with in, a, in an even worse way. Like she was flat out on the couch for three days. Couldn't do a thing. And here I am trying to juggle all the stuff that I'm usually trying to juggle, which is already, you know, pushing the envelope. And then taking, you know, doing extra stuff with kids, meals, uh, you know, routines and stuff like that. And uh, it was tough, very tough. <clears throat> and what tends to happen with me and what I sense tends to happen with a lot of you guys through the conversations that I have with you is that as soon as something like this comes up, some obstacle gets in your way, some unexpected event, something doesn't go according to plan, the stars don't align for whatever reason, that create a clear and simple, easy path, just like you planned it, just like you expected it to go. What's your first response? It's a rhetorical question. My first response is I usually get pissed off. I either get frustrated at the situation, I blame whatever it is that's going on, I, or I'll shame myself if I think that it's my fault. I judge, my, I judge the shit out of myself for how could I let this happen? Basically, I become a victim instantly. As soon as the first sign of, of resistance, things is not going my way. And this is obviously a problem because me being a victim is not going to get me where I want to go. Me being a victim is actually the opposite of where I want to go. Getting where I want to go requires me to take responsibility for my life and to live in a way that evokes positivity, power, progressive anabolic energy, right? I'm trying to build something. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to go backwards. If your goal is to go backwards, then this is, uh, this conversation isn't for you. But if, you're, if your goal is to go forwards, then pay close attention. Because instead of letting the resistance win, each time something comes up, you can use the resistance to make you stronger each time. The general term for what we do inside of a workout is called resistance training. And the whole entire principle is that you meet resistance, you push through resistance, push, I'm not, we'll talk about that word in a second, but you move through resistance and that's what, and that is exactly what makes you stronger. No resistance, no stronger, no progress. So there has to be, there has to be some way that we reframe resistance when it comes our way. So that way, rather than and then curl up into a ball we, and, and, and suck our thumbs and wait till it passes over, we'll avoid the situation altogether, we'll get pissed off, frustrated, negative, and resentful. We have to learn to reframe the resistance and see it for what it really is, which is an opportunity. It is the path itself. The obstacle is the way. So how do we do this? Well, I used to think that, like I said, meeting the resistance was all about pushing through it. I 
and you could naturally see why this would be the case for me because coming up in strength and conditioning, that's what you do. You, there's a weight you push it. There's a weight you push it. That's how you get stronger. And that's the party line that we all get here in, in this uh, hustle centric culture. It's like whatever obstacles are in your way, just push, 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 force your way through, find a way. Doesn't matter. No excuses. Find a way. Make it happen. This works to a point, but I venture to guess that you guys who are here live know better than that. And you guys who are listening to this later on have, sent, have seen that this doesn't really work long term. You can push for a while. In fact, there's uh, you can push for a while, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. You can only force for so long until you run out of juice. So there has to be a different way to do this. You can't fight fire with fire. The resistance is all about the push. You can't fight fear with fear. Consider the only way to actually win this is to die. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a part of you that responds to fear. There's the, this part that is triggered of the thought of loss, lack, scarcity, whatever that storyline is. If I don't do, if I don't, if I don't work 12 hours a day, if I'm not on call 24 seven, I might lose my job. If I don't make, if I don't send this email today then this opportunity might pass me by. If I don't do, you know, this, this workout and eat perfectly, then I'm not gonna achieve my goals. Consider that this part of you and that response to that storyline has to be sacrificed on the altar of your bigger vision. You have to believe that your vision is bigger than you. And therefore, that doesn't actually depend on you. It's actually quite the opposite. Because once you decide that this vision is bigger than you, and the obstacles that you're facing actually become the opposite. Like I've been saying, they become the way that you progress in the game and claim what it is that you're aiming for. So as long as you deny that, and you deny this truth and continue to force the path to look like you think it should look, then you're going to continue to avoid the very thing that is bringing you what you want. So lean into the resistance. Lean into the resistance, my friend. I promise you once you get to it, I promise you. Once you allow yourself, open yourself up, allow yourself to learn whatever it is that the universe is, is trying to teach you in this, things will fall into place. It's happened to me too many times to count. And the people I work with that I get on board with this start to go <laughs> nuclear. I, I want the exact same thing for you. Lean into the resistance. The obstacle is the way. So with that, let's do some breathing. Because what better way to lean into the resistance than to cultivate the ability for us to get so present, so tuned into this power that I'm talking about that exists deep within and is instantly accessible at all times. It's just that we tend to forget. We tend to live in these stories on this fear level, this version of ourselves, the one that's out about making all the decisions. The lizard man. The lizard man's got to die. So you're lying on your back on the mat. I'll demo real quick. I did lots of reading this weekend. I need to do lots more. 
and just start to breathe deeply into your meat suit. From the belly to the chest to the head. This is the main channel, but notice what else responds to your inhale and exhale. Notice where that inhale and exhale gets stuck. Again, resistance. There's an opportunity here also on a physiological level. Your body has downloaded tension in that spot. If you want to get through to the next level, then let go of what's currently keeping you here. Deep layer now. All the way in. Then exhale, just let it go. Then take it in again. And let it go. Keep on going. You can take it about 10 or so, and you're starting to feel like there's more space that's opened up. To me, it's like the mid spine, like right between the edges, the bottom corners, inside corners of my shoulder blades. That space just does not want to let go. Same thing with my neck. All right, now you've got about 10 or so. And you're going to pick up the pace of the breath, still breathing the same volume in and out. I was doing it a little bit faster. Keep doing it following my words, not necessarily my actions. Well, I'm get too lost in this. Because I definitely will. Still deeper with the breath, then the belly, with the chest, sorry, with the belly, chest, and the head. And then up. And every time. And last 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All the way in, all the way out. All the way in, hold, squeeze it at the top. Seal it. Send Take as much time as you need, a few breaths just to come back.
settling back into that meat suit we just talked about. Lengthen yourself out a little bit. Just try and hit the save button on whatever space you created through the spine. This tends to be where the most restrictions lie, which makes sense because this is where most of the nervous activity, this is where it all gets channeled. So everything that you're feeling goes through your spine. So all the blockages, majority of the blockages that exist get coagulated there. So try and establish a new baseline. And then from there, take an exhale and raise your right heel into the air. And with that exhale, the belly button gets strong and presses down into the floor. And then hold that leg where it is and then take another exhale and raise your left heel into the air. And then inhale and squeeze both heels together. And then exhale and lift straight legs towards the ceiling. Doesn't have to be all the way, straight legs I said. So your thigh is gripping the kneecap and drawing the kneecap closer to your hip. Your toes are curling and really reaching your heels away from your hips. And there's a circulation of energy cascading since your feet are towards the ceiling now the energy cascades down from your legs and cycles up the back of your legs you're breathing deeply when you're ready to rock full breath in full breath out and then take that left leg put it right back where it was keep it straight Keep the engagement that you just found with the core and then turn the right heel out to the right. Start to make some circles. Nice and easy, just warming up the hips. But also checking in and noticing what other areas might want to do the work of your head. Use your core, exhale the belly button down in order to prevent that. And then spin the heel the opposite direction. Just a little circle, maybe like, you know, a foot in diameter. A couple of circles, pause, the, pause that right foot, grab your, take your hands behind your head and then grab opposing fingers. Look towards your left foot, raise it ever so slightly and then lower your right foot down to meet your left one. Float them both, squeeze the heels. And then on the next exhale, the right foot raises back up, left foot stays where it is. You're still strong into your core, breathing down into your belly button, rolling your body up. And then you're gonna exhale and lower your right heel again, same exact thing. Do a couple like this, breathe at the bottom, exhale back up, breathe at the top, exhale back down, breathe at the bottom, exhale back up. You got it. And then breathe at the top, exhale back down. Next time your legs are together at the base of the mat, drop the right one and then bring the left leg back up to an L sit position. Relax your head, relax your shoulders, relax your arms. And then keep the right foot kicking away from you, though. Just keep the right leg straight. Cock the left leg out a little bit, start to make some circles. Sweet, 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 sweet. And then switch it up, circle the other way. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Pause it. Can I just run that again? Here we go. Raise that right heel up and look at the right toes. Lower down the left leg to meet the right one. Inhale, squeeze the heels together, and then exhale, lift the left leg up. Breathe at the top. Exhale down again. Good. Try to continuously find more flexing of the spine, the entire spine, not just your neck. with core action. Roll up, roll up, roll up. You're raising and lowering your leg with your breath. 
And then the next time you lower the left leg and you're squeezing your heels together and relax both legs, take a breath, and relax your head, relax everything. And then take both feet in, knees towards chest and grab the tops of your shins and just kind of move in whatever fashion feels best. And side to side, goes backwards. The dishwasher, that's the washing machine, that's the one. And then eventually make your way forwards backwards and then make, build some momentum to vault over a seat and end up in a down dog. Shukla. Very nice. Down dog's feeling delicious. Work with whatever distance between hands and feet you need in order to have straight arms. And, and you can also have your hands turned out slightly if that helps. Don't get stuck in elevated traps, uh, bent elbows. We really find that straight line of power from the floor, through the shoulders, to the hips, so that way you can take the right leg, slide it up, 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 up into the air and kick it straight behind you. Nice. Good. You guys have straighter legs than me in this video. That's awesome. All right. Hips stay square for a minute and then open out the hips Open out the right foot to the left side. Right side of your body is getting long and the left side of your body is getting strong until eventually you keep, you reach so far that your right foot taps the floor and the right hand comes up and you reach over your head. Forward. Relax our stance. And connect with the heel on that right leg. Connect with the hand, that left hand. Good. Press into the floor with the leg, the foot. All right. Straight arms again. And then unstraighten them. Start to roll back over yourself. Nice. Right leg pauses in straight and then bring it back to down dog. Four legged down dog. Very good. And then setting up the second side, same idea. From the hands to through the shoulders to the hips. And the left leg almost just floats up on its own. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, make it straight. Straight, straight, straight. And then take it across to the right side. Left foot, left toes pointed towards the corner of the room you're in. Mind your right hip. And then follow it all the way down. Left foot touches floor. Left hand reaches up and over. Nice. You guys got it. All right, all right. Okay. On the straight and start to spin back in. Let the hips kind of fold a little bit. Good. Nice and graceful. Awesome. Find the floor with a uh, left hand. Left foot spins around. Brief second of three legged dog again, and then four legged dog. Almost done. Find straight arms again in case you lost them. And then maintain straight arms while your knees bend, your hips reach back, but they also drop in altitude until your knees are just floating off the floor. Your eyes are forward. It could be, there could be an imaginary point right between your thumbs. Like if your thumbs are both pointing in, wherever they, that line would intersect. And then you straighten the knees again, bring your hips back up, try to keep your arms straight and keep pressing your arm right back. And then come down again. Same exact motion. Good, nice. Good. And use the straight again. You can go at your own pace with this. Just don't cheat yourself by speeding through 
the sticking point, the resistance, that's where the magic happens, folks. Come down again, arms to straight, pause, belly button towards the ceiling, and then straighten for the knees again. Now take a half a step in and find a tabletop with knees floating. Try to keep the knees up the whole time if you can. Knees are floating, feet are shoulder width apart, hands are shoulder width apart, right under your shoulders. And then we're gonna do these thigh masters with the knees floating. So you're gonna reach wide, reach wide, reach wide, reach wide, and then squeeze in. And then go wide again. Pay attention to what's happening in your low back. Is it sagging? Don't let it. Sew your belly button up towards the ceiling. Pause in neutral. And then you're going to take both knees off to the right and bring your chest straight down between your hands. Little quadruped twist. Very good. And then press back up. And then off to the left side with both knees, chest to the floor. Ear to the floor, as Brian would say, listen for the buffalo. Back to the middle. And sweep under. One side at a time. Go on your own, sweep into the left, press them back up, sweep into the right. All right. And then relax. Oh, snap. I was checking out athletic shorts yesterday on a, on a different device, and now I'm getting ads for shorts here on my computer. That's amazing. Uh, I can think about that later. So, no, I'm not going to buy some chubbies. So here, I'm going to drop the playlist for you to punch in as soon as we go. And then I'm going to sweep. Okay. So we got three exercises to start off with. Spider push-ups, spider crunches, and the ground up pistol squat. And that doesn't mean like, uh, like Meet the style. That means from the ground up. So the spider push up looks like this. You're going to start off with your feet together. But as, but then go wide with one leg and reach wide with the other hand and do a push up. Bring your chest right down as if nothing is any different. Push up, step in, same thing on the side. And, try, and always keep checking in with your hips because especially as you're stepping what tends to happen for me is my butt kicks out so every time you step back in re-establish that slate and that posterior pelvic tilt the shortening of the belt towards the ribs and then just try to bring your chest right down and brush the sides Keep it in real nice and tight with the arm that you need arm reaching, right? That's the first exercise. You're going to do eight total, which means four in each direction. And then you'll use hey, can, you go, can you do it one more time? I was just to show it one more time. Sorry. No worries. Start off regular plank, then step wide and wide. All good. Oh, okay. On the lateral side. And even right here, like my butt kicks up, fix it. You push it up. Whoa. What do you call those? Spider push up? Spider push up. Okay. Second exercise Spider crunch. You guys know this one, Pete's favorite. We should call it the Pete crunch. If you're just using body weight, 
then you're just going to squeeze your elbows into your knees. Don't worry about having the grip behind your head because then chances are you won't be able to actually make a strong connection here. If you can, great. If you can't, prioritize that strong connection right here. Okay. And the heel is also strong connection. And then you're going to squeeze that into that connection and lift and see if you can get your sacrum off the floor and your mid back off the floor also. If you do have a yoga ball nearby, you can totally check that out. Sometimes people find it confusing. If it does confuse you, then just scrap it and do the, uh, the body weight version, but it's gonna be nice. To feel that resistance of you pushing into an object. And you're gonna do eight reps of that guy as well. Last one up, the ground up pistol squat. So you wanna sit back, hips to heel, so that the weight, as much weight as possible of your body is on that foot. And if you want to do like I do, and just kind of like massage the toes for a second, then that can be really helpful. You want a lot of strength to then press up, land here, and then step back down again, hips to heel. And as you progress with this, you can do, you know, rely on that front leg less, extend more forward. Or maybe eventually you're eliminating the, the leg altogether and just stays floating. I guess if anybody gets there, we have a little gauntlet challenge. But you're gonna, whatever variation you decide on, you're gonna do four reps on each side. And then bring it back to the top of the rotation. Cool. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. All right. Nice. That's looking good. For the spider push up, kind of reach that one hand out as far as you can and keep it kind of straight. The further you reach, the easier that'll be to do. Cool. How long are we holding on the uh, the spider crunch? So at the top, you're gonna squeeze like one one thousand, okay. and then you do eight reps. Squeeze one thousand. Let go. Squeeze one thousand. And I think what trips most people up with this, yeah, hey, Pete, yours looks good, Elliot. Maybe there's like not enough ball for you to really get a good grip on it. Maybe you want to like. Hike your grip further up, you know. Yeah, that way you don't. Then you're not going to pinch it out of your, you know, out of your clutches. Yeah. Stick the ball. There we go. One thousand. Good. One one thousand. Exactly. Eight reps. All right. I got so winded just from demoing these. My energy is so low. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Yeah, and if you want to play with it, you guys just look great. But just FYI, you also have the option to use a weight. <clears throat> just hold it, you know, at the uh, the collarbone. 
kind of give yourself a little bit more mechanical advantage. You can do one weight held in tight, or you can do two weight, two lightweights. I guess kettlebell I own. Nice. <laughs> yeah, your crystal squats are solid, so you're gonna need a ton of help. But maybe it yeah, just makes a balance a little easier. Because you can, uh, in addition to the mechanical advantage of having a little bit more weight on the on the front of your body, you can also create tension in your core by squeezing into that bell, like trying to rip it apart, and that'll also help with your balance. Rip the bell apart, depress the, the shoulder blades, do belt to, to ribs, ribs to belt, and all that gets much easier to find when you have that bell in your hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yep. Step one, but try not to let your body go diagonal. Keep your body dead on. Like you're a, there's a sharpie on your sternum. <laughs> Making a mark in the exact same spot every, every, every single time on those push ups, that is nice. <sighs> Nice. Elliot, to warm up your quads, if you're doing it, yeah, okay, you can grab, do that for a set, and then next set, check in and just try to like bring your leg up with you, like same cadence as your hips. It will be easy because you're actually grabbing the toe, but if you like use, use quad power, just grip that bad boy and just bring it up there. Ah, yeah, kick is like toe kick while you're doing the crystal squat. Yeah. Video B. Oh, I'm assuming something about it. All right, a few more minutes. So with the push-ups, you're saying, <coughs> really, really it's, you're trying to do a one-arm push-up with like help? Exactly. Yeah, think about it like that. Yeah, it's like a little training wheel for a one-arm push-up. That's, that's the, that's perfect. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. 
I'll try and see how difficult the one arm push up is. Nice. Yep. That's about as far as I get to, Pete. Don't worry. I've seen people who claim to do one arm push ups, and all they do really is just like shoulder flexion. They just kind of like do this. Mm. Like, Sounds like a good way to tear your rotator cuff. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Something. The one arm push up is not it. Nice. Oh, let's squeeze it. Pop that ball. Twenty six more seconds. Going to inflate my yoga ball. Ooh. All right, five more seconds. Finish up, finish up. Groovy. All right. Sure. You have a great time doing mm -hmm. these. So we're going to start off with everyone's favorite, the cycled split jump. <clears throat> start off with your back knee on the floor so you can just find what a uh, half kneeling position looks like. And then from there, you're just going to use your hands, all of your hands straight up, switch feet on the way down. So up, down, up. And after the first one, you're just tapping the floor with the back foot. You're not actually resting on the way. You're gonna do that for 30 seconds. It doesn't have to be a killer pace, just a consistent pace is what makes the magic happen with this one. And then you're going to <clears throat> come down to knees. You're gonna be, your knees are gonna be slightly behind your hips. Ever so slightly, you're gonna draw the belly button up as much as possible. You're gonna pull the shoulder blade down as much as possible. And by shoulder blades down, I mean you can't push that pockets. And by belly button up, I mean towards the ceiling. So it's two different axes there. And then you're just going to bend the elbows really close to your body, just like you just worked on, and just try to. Tap the floor out in front of you with your nose as far forward as you can. Look back up, maintain that belly up, shoulder blades back the whole entire time. Strength in pressing into the floor to puff up the chest. And then you, know, you can play around with different, uh, like exactly what the distance between your knees and your hands wants to be. Closer in, it'll be even harder because it'll be more of your weight over your hands as you go forward. Figure out what works for you. And then the last one is alternating toe touch. You're going to have one leg floating, other leg straight up, one hand reaching back, other hand tapping, could be your shin, maybe eventually your toe, but I want you to prioritize. The straight leg. So, if, and since you can see it, like actually fight to get to that straight leg. And then wherever you get down here is fine. And that's all from the core, like we did in the warm up. And then switch. Oh, yeah. Straight legs. Roll up, by the way. Back and forth. Cool. Are the legs floating the whole time. You got it. I did. Yep. All right. You guys good to go? Well, let's hit it.
On your mark, get set, go. Cycle split jump to start. It's found a nice clip. I'm trying to make this as fluid as you can. Like just enough energy to launch you into the air so you can swap your legs going and back without too much of a fuss. All right, now switch it up or pause first. Make your way to your knees. It's like a slightly elongated uh, tabletop. Feet in the air. The belly button up. Three, two, one, and then take, tap the floor with your nose out in front. Good. There you go. Nice job, Ellie. Reach for it. Three, two, one. Okay. 15 seconds, make your way to your back. Three, two, one. Alternating toe touch. Good. And try not to fling your arms. Try instead to straighten the leg and just gently tap wherever you can tap. Straighten the leg. Straighten the leg. Good. Good. Lower your feet more. The one that's on the app. Good. And then straighten the other one more. Don't grab the toe. There. 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 All right. Stop. Nice. Okay, one done. Second split jumps for round two. We're gonna go in 20 seconds. She has water out here. Three, two, one, and go. Let jumps. I was gonna make some joke about like squeezing the liquid out of those Lysol wipes, but that just got really messed up there, so I decided not to say. As far as you can see those from there, I guess I'm not that surprised. <laughs> okay. It's common courtesy, you wipe down your gym equipment after each use. Beautiful. All right, stop. Woo. All right. Take a few breaths. It's centered. This is the most CNS heavy, I want to say, out of the three. Screen clear and go. Elbows in, good. Good. Keep that cat spine the whole time. Good. Yeah. Drop eight. Four, 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 four. No rounded beat. Press that chest up. There you go. There you go. I lose the rounded man. Mm. Fix that. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, at the time, maybe players are not going quite so far and see if you can maintain that protracted spine or uh, flex spine. All right, last one up. Lean toe touch, let's get it. Three, two, one, and go. Mango. Yeah, 
Not too shabby. That's two rounds down. Let's get it again. Fifteen more seconds to rest. And then we'll start round three. All right, three, two, one, and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Float like a butterfly, Pete. Oh, no, oh, butterfly that has bad knees. <laughs> and time. Uh, if it feels better for your knees, you can just kind of go not go down quite all the way. See that. Yeah, on. no, it's the uh, it's just the the action right here at the uh, the quad meets the knee. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doesn't matter how far down I go. Mm -hmm. All right, ready, set. Stuff. Try to hold that top position for a half a second. Press it in. All right. Three, two, one. Ooh, last round. What you say? Oh boy. Oh baby. Oh boy. The wipes are gonna come out early. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. I said that's Nice. <laughs> and it's doing a little 80s uh, power aerobics action. Dun, dun, dun. And up. Here we go. Three, two, one, and get it. Knee plank, no touch. This is awesome. Take it out as the last one. Keep it tight. Elbows in. Chest up. Belt up. Good. And ten. Woo. Ooh, Nelly. All right, here we go. Five seconds to victory. Come on. 
And toe touch. Let's see it. Last, 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 last set. <clears throat> Straight, good. Tap and hold, good. That's it, Pete. Yep. Both legs are straight. Keep kicking both heels. Nice. Oh, I like that. Instead of grabbing. Okay, three, two, one. All right. Woo! Amazing. Amazing. You guys are my heroes. Let's decompress. Make your way to child's pose. Let's do child's pose. Yeah. So the behind you, knees as wise as that. Or you know, a little bit of the camera width if you don't have a match for it. And then man. settle in. I like to do the palms grab heels. You might like to do hands in front of you on the mat. So we're gonna do some stuff we'll be happy with. So mm. everyone, you like more like that? Mm. Give it a couple more breaths. All right, a little bit. Okay. And then hands are going to be in front of your head slightly, pressing the palms, making your way to quadruped position, and then lengthen it out slightly, coming back to our downward facing dog. And then after a minute or a moment here, you're going to shorten the down dog. Left hand reaches to the outside of the right shin or heel or ankle. A little twist the down dog. Then just let your head hang. Look towards the right side of the room under your right armpit. And then try to even on your head to any There's a power coming from your right hand. Do your original order. Do your Joseph. And then replace left hand to the floor. Same thing on the side. Not a bit. Take a second just to optimize. And the hand is short. And Gazing to the left, hips towards the center. Big breath. Right hand back to the floor, step out to a regular down dog. 